My people, it has been four months since Stardew Valley's 1.5 update came out and still nobody has made a guide on what crops you should be growing on Ginger Island. So let's fix that. Since Ginger Island is late game content, I wanna frame this video around someone who is setting themselves up for the long term. So let's talk assumptions. On the Ginger Island farm, the whole year is just basically one big season where you can grow any crop. This comes with a few huge advantages, but I think that the biggest one is that the fertilizer you put on a tile will never go away as long as you keep a crop growing there. This means that when we do our analysis later in the video, we'll be able to remove the cost of fertilizer altogether since it's a one-time purchase. Also, processing your crops increases their value by a lot, but if you don't have enough kegs or preserves jars, you're limited in the number of artisan goods you can create. For the first part of this video, we'll assume that you have an unlimited number of kegs, which for an end game farm isn't that crazy of an assumption to make. But if you're not quite there yet, it will give you something to work towards. Having space for the kegs isn't an issue because you can put them almost anywhere in the game, even if it looks a little ridiculous. The only other variable we have to worry about is what farming professions you've chosen. In my professions video, I talked about how rancher is better early on, but in the end game, you'll want tiller at level five. Tiller makes crops grow 10% faster, and at level 10, you can choose either Artisan, which makes wine sell for 40% more, or Agriculturist, which makes crops worth 10% more. Your level 10 choice will change depending on which of the upcoming strategies you decide to go with. Let's talk about what options we have to consider. Everyone has known for a long time that Starfruit and Ancient Fruit are always in the running for most profitable crop. And because of Mr. Penguin Panda's video on best crops for every season, I put hops in there too. I'll also look at pineapples because of what I found in my video where I looked at the new crops from 1.5. I also thought that sweet gem berries might be worth looking into, but nothing came out of that. I've made a spreadsheet that accounts for the cost of the seed, how many days a crop takes to grow, how much it sells for, and the total number of tiles on the island farm to tell us how much gold per day we can expect out of the whole farm. Let's look at an example. Growing raw star fruit with deluxe retaining soil and the tiller and agriculturalist professions. This is far from optimal, but it serves as a good comparison for when we talk about our other ways to grow starfruit. Starfruit seeds cost 400 gold, and with the 10% speed boost from Agriculturist, they only take 11 days to grow. Just like I talked about in my fertilizers video, different crop qualities are worth different amounts. So if you take a weighted average of the price of each quality and how likely you are to get that quality, you'll get the expected value of that crop. In this case, the average star fruit that you'll harvest will be worth 980 gold, leading to a profit of 580 per star fruit. If you did this on all available 878 tiles on the Ginger Island farm, you would make 509,000 gold every 11 days, or 46.3 thousand gold per day. But that's just one example. What if we used a different fertilizer? Or if we made all of the star fruit into wine? Or what if we had the artisan profession instead of agriculturist? Thankfully, we can whittle down some of these options because they just don't make sense to think about. For example, if we're looking at growing raw crops, why would we bother with Artisan's 40% bonus to selling wines? Or if we're making all of our crops into wine, then we don't need to worry about deluxe fertilizer because increasing the quality of crops makes no difference if they're all just going to be processed anyway. When we remove all of the combinations that don't make sense, our list doesn't look quite as frightening. So let's take a look at what's best. You can see that filling your entire island with hops then processing them all into pale ales gives the greatest profit at 369,000 gold per day. Theoretically, it's the maximally efficient option, but you would need to pick over 800 crops every day, run around and put them all in a keg, and then also run around and harvest your 800 pale ales from two days ago, every day. Not to mention that hops are a trellis crop, so you couldn't technically fit 878 of them on the island anyway. For these reasons, I'm ruling this out. So the next best option appears to be growing starfruit with hyperspeed grow and the tiller profession, then turning them all into wines and selling them with artisan. This yields 70,000 less gold per day than making pale ale, but you only need to visit the island farm once every seven days to maintain it. This is a really solid option, and even though it may take some time to save up the hyperspeed grow that you need, you'll make a ton of money. But there's one drawback that I think makes it the second best option, how long it takes to plant all of the seeds. First of all, you would need to have around 900 starfruit seeds at any given time, meaning that you'll be taking some extra trips to Sandy's shop just to stock up. Then you need to harvest all 878 starfruit crops and then go through and replant all of the seeds, which doesn't sound like it takes a long time, but I'd say in total the whole process takes a full day, once a week to maintain. Some of you are probably alright with this time commitment, but there's an option that requires less time with the same payoff. 
Hey guys, real quick, if this video is helpful, I would appreciate if you considered subscribing or joining me at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez. My recommendation is to make ancient fruit wine with deluxe retaining soil. Crops that regrow like ancient fruit aren't affected by speed grows beyond the initial growth period, nor does deluxe fertilizer do anything since all of the fruits will be turned into wine. Plus, the cost of the seeds are effectively zero since they'll produce fruit forever, and because it's a regrowing crop, you don't have to spend any time planting seeds. For all of these reasons, this is the best option. So to sum up, here's what your experience will look like. Plant your first ancient seed on Ginger Island and apply deluxe retaining soil. After 28 days, it grows completely and starts producing ancient fruit. Put any ancient fruits that you get into a seed maker so that you can get more ancient seeds to plant. Continue to do this until you've filled up every tile that you can on Ginger Island. From there, you'll visit the island every seven days to harvest all of your ancient fruit and put them into your 878 kegs. I suggest putting all of your kegs on Ginger Island for convenience. Ancient fruits take just under seven days to process in the keg, so by the time you come back to the island to pick your next batch, you'll be able to collect all of your wines from last week at the same time. On top of that, you can age some of these wines in casks for extra profit, but otherwise just sell them all with the artisan profession for an insane amount of money. This is the best option, and I think it's what you should work towards. But I'm sure there's plenty of you watching that don't yet have almost 900 kegs, or you still want to use your island farm space efficiently while you wait for the ancient fruit to grow. So let's talk about some feasible options you have while you're working towards the ideal setup. If kegs are what's holding you back, I think that the best non-processed crop to raise is the pineapple. It ends up being the same gold per day as raw star fruit, but you don't ever need to replant them. The biggest drawback here is being able to get your hands on enough pineapple seeds. Since you can only buy them from the island trader, it probably makes sense to do the seed maker thing, which could take a while to save up. Since pineapple seeds are easier to get than ancient seeds, you may wish to initially fill your farm with pineapples, then when you have an ancient seed, just swap it out into a tile that already has deluxe retaining soil waiting for it. If you're already going to Ginger Island more than once per week, you could throw some banana trees into the mix. Since you get one fruit per day out of the tree, banana wine ends up being more gold per day than anything else. The tree needs a 3x3 area around it to grow initially, but once it's fully grown, you could surround it with whatever you want. Having a setup like this would take at least two months to create, but I think it's really cool. This may be a little overkill, but when my friend Dippy Wallop showed me that he did this on his farm, it was too beautiful not to mention. There's also an insane strategy courtesy of Mr. Penguin Panda where you just throw crops out the window altogether. The idea is that you plant Fairy Rose, whose honey sells for 952 gold each with the artisan profession, and surround them with beehives. It takes a huge amount of material gathering to set this up, but you can actually plant crops in some of these dirt patches west of the river. So while you may not adopt this strategy in the main area of the farm, this could be a good way to introduce some extra money into your system. Bees produce honey every four days, and apparently the money that you make here is comparable to just having all ancient fruits. Remember, you can mix and match any of these strategies and you'll be all right. Mass producing any sort of crop at this level is likely going to get you a lot of the money that you need, so the more important thing is that you're growing something. That's all I have for you this time though, I hope it was helpful and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.